What's up, everybody? It's Tony Lopez here with Alternative Living Spaces. Thank you so much for tuning in. And on today's episode, we're going to be going over the topic of how to paint the exterior of your shipping container home. Uh, now, this is a really important topic. Um, I know a lot of you, if you're watching this, you probably have a lot of questions right now, right? Like, what is the best way to prepare your shipping container for the paint? Uh, do, you need, do you need to remove stickers? Do you need to remove rust? How do you treat the rust? Uh, and then questions about the paint process, right? Like what type of paint should I be using? Uh, what's the most effective way to apply that paint onto the container? And maybe even simple questions like how much paint do I need? Uh, all of these kinds of questions are going to be answered in this video. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll dive right in. Um, so uh, we're continuing in our build series. If you've been part of this uh, so far, uh, we will have several more videos coming out, just continuing through the process of you know, what it takes to build out a shipping container home. Uh, and so when it comes to prepping your container for the paint, uh, first of all, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the stickers. Now, uh, if you have an older container like the one here in this image, uh, basically those stickers could basically be baked on at this point. If you have a new one trip container, uh, you know, it's only been around for about a year or so. Sometimes those stickers are easy to pull off. It could be as simple as uh, just scraping up one of the corners and peeling it right off. However, if you're working with a container that's a lot older, these stickers are basically baked on. It's really, really difficult to try to just scrape them off. And so in order to save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of time and frustration, uh, what I'd recommend is using a heat gun. You can buy one of these for under $50. Uh, and basically, it's going to allow you now to heat up the stickers and scrape them off a lot easier. So definitely the way to go uh, when it comes to removing the stickers. Uh, the next step in the process is gonna be removing rust. Uh, so you really do want all your rust removed. You don't wanna just paint right over the rust. Uh, that's really just putting a Band-Aid on a larger problem, right? So uh, you do need to properly treat it. Uh, best way to remove the rust uh, can vary. Uh, what we've learned though is really using a flap disc is gonna be really helpful. Uh, you don't wanna use um, a cutting wheel. So you'll be using a grinder. If you use a cutting wheel, we did this early on and it ended up putting a lot of just scratches, marks right into the container. And then we, when we went to the painting stage, uh, basically it highlighted all those defects. So it didn't look good. Uh, so we switched to using a flap disc. It's basically almost like a grinding pad. Um, goes right on your grinder. And it will basically allow you to remove the rust, scratch it, scrape it off without grinding too much into the container. Uh, now, when you're removing rust, you do want to take it down to the bare metal. You do want to see all of that rust not present anymore. Um, so that would be that next step. Um, after that, you're going to transition to cleaning the exterior of your container. Uh, this is really a step that could be really simple. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can go ahead and use something more like a, uh, you know, basically like a sprayer. So when you get up on the rooftop, you're really getting everything off, making sure you're getting in the knuckles, the under rail, um, basically on the bottom of the container around the perimeter. Um, you just want to make sure all debris from, from your grinding is removed, as well as any dust. You know, if, if there's dust and debris on your container, when you go to paint it, the paint just simply isn't going to stick as well. So you want everything to be really clean. Um, and then once it's clean, your next step is going to be to treat the rust um, that you removed, right? So at this step, you're going to basically get kind of like a, a few different product options, but we use Rust-Oleum. Uh, basically, it's a rust primer. And so if you are dealing with something that's more like a one-trip container, uh, you can get away with the spray cans. You may just need a couple spray cans. Um, and any of those areas where there's bare metal where rust was removed, you're going to want to apply it there. However, if you're using a container that's older, um, might have a, may, may have had a lot more rust that you had to remove, uh, you can go ahead and also buy this in one gallon pails um, and you can hand roll it on. Or if you have a paint sprayer, you can use that to spray it on. But uh, really important after you remove the rust to treat it with the right kind of primer. Um, last step in uh, the process of preparing your container for the paint is taping and masking off the key areas. Um, uh, the areas you typically are going to want to mask off are basically the rubber seals that go around the container doors, because if you paint those, the paint's just going to chip off. It's not going to look nice. So you're going to want to get that taped off. Sometimes there's rubber handles on your container doors as well, uh, basically on that door hardware. 
Um, we will tape off the data plate on the container. The data plate is just that placard that's usually on the left door of the container, has information about that container. So it's nice to tape that off in case you ever need that information. Um, and then lastly, the actual hardware on the doors is something that you can choose to go ahead and tape off as well. Sometimes that's a nice accent, then it'll pop off of the color that you painted your container. Um, or you can choose to go ahead and paint right over that hardware as well. So it's uh, really important you do want to prep well. If you're painting this on your property at home, you're going to want to make sure you put some tarps down if you're concerned about uh, overspray or things like that. You don't want to maybe mess up the ground if you're in an area where maybe there's pavers or some finished concrete. So um, after you have completed preparing your container, uh, you're now ready to paint your container. Uh, and so we're going to address some of the, the hot questions here that come up in that process of painting your container. First of all, what type of paint do you need? Um, so there's a variety of paints that can work with containers. Uh, a product that we have really liked using is from Sher Sherwin-Williams. It's the Pro Industrial Alkyd Enamel Exterior Paint. Uh, this has worked really well for us. Uh, you can get it in one gallon buckets or five gallon as well. Um, and it is cost effective and it's something that you can pick up. Uh, we get it from Lowe's. So it also is very readily accessible. So definitely a good product to use uh, in terms of type of paint. Uh, when it comes to the finish of paint, you're going to have a few different options. Um, what we typically recommend is staying right around semi-gloss or satin, right? If you go high gloss, um, especially if you have an older container uh, with dents, you're just going to highlight all of the imperfections. So that doesn't really ever look good. So uh, you want to stay, stay clear of high gloss, um, and then you want to stay clear of, of matte and flat as well. Uh, if you go with those colors, you're going to attract a lot of dust, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to clean the container, and it's just going to show dust a lot easier. So uh, sticking with satin and with semi-gloss is definitely a good approach uh, when it comes to your paint finishes. Uh, when it comes to quantity of paint, you know, this is an important question. You don't want to over purchase paint or you don't want to under purchase and have to go back to the store to get more. So um, if you're doing a 20 foot container, typically uh, a five gallons of paint is plenty. Um, if you're really good with a paint sprayer, you may only use three gallons of that paint. Um, but typically we're looking at about five gallons of paint and we're usually doing a couple coats of paint on the container. Uh, now the amount of coats of paints could be determined also by the colors you're selecting, right? Like if you have a really dark container, you got a container that already was painted a dark color and now you're trying to paint it a very light color, you may require two to three coats uh, to make sure it lays on there nice. Um, if you're doing a 40 foot container, uh, we do recommend 10 gallons of paint. Um, and if it's your first time using a paint sprayer, uh, you will probably use majority of that. However, if, if you're you know experienced with paint sprayers, um, you know, you could be a little bit more effective with how that's used and, you know, you'll have some leftover, which, which should be fine as well. So, um, next up, uh, does color matter? Uh, this is a, a good question. So we've painted, you know, we've built over a hundred containers and we've probably painted 50 different colors on our containers, right? So, uh, experienced a lot with colors and, you know, at the end of the day, you really can paint a container, kind of whatever color you want, if I'm honest as long as you're insulating it properly. So, uh, you know, in this example images here, we have uh, the bottom left is a container. It's actually our first container that I ever built. And it was here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, summers in, in Vegas are really hot, right? Like, you know, today it is going to hit 111. And I remember when I built this first container, it was, you know, it's painted black. It attracts heat. It's a metal box. Um, however, if it is insulated well, uh, you can get away with painting it black. Now, if you're if you're really interested in just trying to make it very energy efficient, you know, of course, black isn't the way to go. So uh, top right is a container we did that went to uh, Springdale, Utah, uh, and we painted that one white. And, you know, it's it, it's worked well, right? White is going to reflect heat more naturally. Uh, what we have done is there are instances where we've painted the sides black, and then we painted the top white to help reflect some of that heat. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, you can get really creative though, and do what you'd like. Uh, we'll, we'll show some examples of some other colors, uh, in terms of colors we painted containers at the end of this. So, uh, when it comes to the application of the paint, there's a couple different options. Uh, so you can hand roll, uh, basically your paint on, or you can use a paint sprayer. Now the first probably three to five containers that I built, I hand rolled the paint on. Um, what I can say about that is it takes a very long time. 
Um, and it can be a little bit of a grueling process because if you do need to do two to three coats, you're hand rolling this entire container, two to three coats, it's just a lot. And so uh, if you don't have experience with a paint sprayer, you don't have a budget uh, to use a paint sprayer, maybe you're having a hard time accessing a paint sprayer, you can hand roll it. We've done it. Uh, get, get a good audio book and get ready for an eight hour day of, of rolling on paint, right? Um, however, you know, uh, if you can go the paint sprayer route, that's, that's usually going to be most effective. If you're hand rolling, here's just an overview of some of the supplies you're going to need. Um, you know, you can see here we have a, a smaller paint roller. That's really good for the valleys in the corrugation uh, on the siding. Uh, so it helps you reach into those areas. And then you can see here a paintbrush. You know, you're going to want to get inside of the knuckles of the container. So having a paintbrush will be really helpful. Um, when it comes to a paint sprayer, uh, the type of paint sprayer we're currently using is a, is a Graco brand. And so we do recommend the Graco paint sprayers. They've been really good for us. Uh, they typically range, you know, somewhere around $450 to around $750. And you can get those right on Amazon. Uh, and so those have been, you know, really effective and um, definitely a good investment, especially if you're going to be doing more than one container or you plan on painting down the road, uh, could be just worth go ahead and getting that. So, um, so some general equipment and supplies. If you're going to be using a paint sprayer, you do want to use it properly and safely. Uh, and so you, you can see here, you got a Tyvek suit. Uh, that's, that's helpful just so you don't get over spray all over your nice outfit. So, and you can get those for cheap. Uh, you also do have uh, basically the, the respirator there, some eyewear, gloves, uh, headwear, um, all that's just important as you're as you're using this paint spray. You don't want to be inhaling uh, all of that overspray. So, um, a couple examples of just some colors that we've done uh, with our units. Uh, I really like this one. This one went to um, basically Southern California area, uh, San Luis Obispo, and we did it with an olive green color. And I really like how that turned out. That was a nice look. Um, these two are here in Las Vegas. Um, we did a little bit of a unique pattern here. We went with the gray on the exterior. But you'll notice the red, that's actually the original container doors. And so we made those um, red. And in this image, they're open, but those open and close right there. And it was a cool little way to just do a little bit of an accent on the container. Uh, this was a funky one. It went out to Joshua Tree. He wanted it to match more of like the sunrise vibe. So put a giant rectangle on it, a little different. But hey, you can put patterns. I mean, I think I liked the, like the octagonal kind of modern vibe, right? You can do like diagonals across the container mix match different colors so definitely some cool things you can do there and then lastly this one you know we went with a lime green which really stood out i think it did definitely add a lot of value to the container i think it looks really cool um, so you can definitely go with some of those more shocking colors too so um, and then lastly this was one that we had done this was one of the first units we ever did back in joshua tree california um, i really loved this color it was like a light blue um, and uh, you know it's a nice color it's it's, it's you know, a little bit different than white, right? Like I think uh, it's nice to have some color uh, when it comes to your container, um, but it also isn't a dark color. So it doesn't attract heat or anything like that. And so really like how that turned out. Um, so uh, with that, uh, that's basically kind of step-by-step -step, uh, when it comes to uh, best way to prepare your container and how to paint your container. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we'll have more videos coming out in this series teaching you uh, the next steps in the build process for a container home. Um, we also have a course that's going to be coming out soon. So excited to get you more information on that. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.